Is it possible well-meaning American taxpayers are unsuspectingly empowering charities to bail out violent criminals so they can go back on the street to riot and loot, destroying our communities? Front Page Index takes a closer look at how a national network of 501c3 tax-exempt charities are able to generate millions of dollars in a matter of 4 to 20 days to bail out violent criminals, including a child rapist and a murderer. Our main focus in this investigation will be the Minnesota Freedom Fund. But we will also examine how Minnesota Freedom Fund became tied to a network of bail companies with tax-exempt status and politicians campaigning on bail reform and defunding the police during the George Floyd riots. Let's take a closer look at the timeline. On May 25, 2020, George Floyd tragically dies at the hands of Minnesota police. On May 27th, the Floyd family launches a GoFundMe page for funeral and memorial services that generated more than $14 million in donations. The George Floyd riots, which followed after Mr. Floyd's death, have become the costliest riots in U.S. history, estimated at $2 billion in property damage. As of June 22nd, 19 people have died amid the rioting and protesting. According to the Washington Post, since May 27th, officials arrested more than 14,000 people across 49 cities nationwide. Under the guise of a 501c3 tax-exempt charity, Minnesota Freedom Fund and at least 100 unregulated bail fund companies in various states who bail out violent criminals have cast suspicion on whether they have acted in violation of IRS lobbying rules by accepting donations solicited by political actors, including Kamala Harris, a candidate running for federal political office for vice president of the United States, who is also campaigning on bail reform and defunding the police. From May 25th to June 17th, when collecting funds generated by political entities who promote the Minnesota Freedom Fund on the internet and social media, Minnesota Freedom Fund, a small charity, received approximately $35 million in donations. These donations included at least 13 staffers for Joe Biden, a senior spokesperson for the DNC, and affiliate aides to Tom Steyer and Hillary Clinton. On May 29th, a Vox article suggests Minnesota Freedom Fund first gained traction online through an Antifa activist Twitter page. On May 30th, a Friday, Forbes.com reported since Wednesday, May 27th, Minnesota Freedom Fund raised $20 million in four days amid the George Floyd protests. Minnesota Freedom Fund board member Steve Boland told Forbes.com before Floyd's death, Minnesota Freedom Fund raised around $80,000 this year. Minnesota Freedom Fund's IRS Form 990s of 2017 states they took in about $57,000 and about $110,000 in 2018. Boland also told Forbes.com donations were received from at least 150,000 unique donors. Minnesota Freedom Fund's website states as of September 19th, it had 142,109 donors. Minnesota Freedom Fund also has a link to donate with PayPal. On June 1st, several things take place that become major news trends. On June 1st, a Monday, the New York Times published an article and shared on social media highlighting Minnesota Freedom Fund raised $20 million in four days. The New York Times article quotes Minnesota Freedom Fund Executive Director Tanya Hanzi saying, By law, the fund is not able to re-grant its funds to other organizations, but is consulting with lawyers to see if there is some way to allocate the funds more broadly. Also on June 1st, Kamala Harris sends out a tweet telling people to chip in and donate to the Minnesota Freedom Fund with a graphic depicting the Minnesota Freedom Fund logo.
It is this open source action that triggers Minnesota Freedom Fund's 501c3 tax exempt status as according to IRS rules, this should be deemed grand scale lobbying. It also puts into question whether this was ethical for Kamala Harris. When Kamala Harris promoted Minnesota Freedom Fund on social media, she also provided a link that leads to a third-party website for Act Blue Charities, which originated with the Iowa Senate Democrats' political, not charitable, Act Blue page for Kamala Harris. Harris dropped out of the political race in Iowa without a single vote cast, leaving behind a million dollars in campaign debt. Act Blue Charities is part of Act Blue, a major fundraising platform for the Democratic Party that also collects donations for 501c3 designations and a separate Act Blue Civics 501c4 designation, which allows for political lobbying. On June 1st was also Blackout Day for Black Lives Matter, who distributed a list of 21 organizations, including bail fund organizations, with 501c3 status with donation links that include Minnesota Freedom Fund. On the list is a Black Lives Matter Act Blue Charities link for Black Lives Matter, stating, Your contribution will benefit Black Lives Matter Support Fund at Tides Foundation. The Tides Foundation is also backed by George Soros, who has funded many radical causes under the guise of 501c3 charities. Tides Foundation was also sponsor of what was then known as the 2,000-page bill, the Affordable Care Act. Obamacare, as we know it today, taxed many hardworking Americans out of the system and made health insurance more expensive while also being unattainable for some. From May 25th to June 8th, demonstrators are infiltrated by Marxist anarchists and American cities are looted, torched, and terrorized with violent crime, including crimes against and murder of police. The infiltration of demonstrations is not denounced by the Democrats and protests are even encouraged by Kamala Harris. Between May 26th and August 22nd, a U.S. Crisis Monitor study recorded over 7,750 demonstrations linked to the Black Lives Matter movement across more than 2,440 locations in all 50 states, including Washington, D.C. Areas marked with an orange dot shows cities experiencing riots and violent crime. On June 12, 2020, Minnesota Freedom Fund retweets a tweet from National Bail Fund Network with a graphic stating, Defend our communities! Defund the police! The tweet includes a link with bail fund organizations in 100 cities linking to communityjusticeexchange.org, National Bail Fund Network. A disclaimer on the About page of Community Justice Exchange states, the National Bail Fund Network was hosted at the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund in its first two years. The network is currently hosted at Community Justice Exchange, a project of TIDES. The first tier for donations go to Community Justice Exchange. The second tier goes to bail out illegal immigrants with a separate link provided for Act Blue Charities. The third tier donations go either directly to the Tides Center or the Network for Good, which is described as a hybrid organization and nonprofit owned for profit. The disclaimer on the About page further states the Network for Good's nonprofit donor advised fund uses the internet and mobile technology to securely and efficiently distribute thousands of donations from their donors to their favorite charities each year. When looking at the Network for Good's 2018 IRS Form 990, which is about 1,400 pages long, it shows a cash grant assistance to Brooklyn Community Bail Fund, Inc. in the amount of $36,086. Brooklyn Community Bail Fund charity website states, 
Additional support for the New York Immigration Freedom Fund, a program of the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund, comes from the New York City Council. The New York City Council is, of course, a political establishment. This, of course, again leaves the question if grand-scale lobbying is at play. And if this all sounds very confusing to you, like you're being hoodwinked, that is the whole point. On June 17th, The Hill online publication reported Minnesota Freedom Fund confirmed they raised $35 million after George Floyd's death on May 25th, 2020, but was receiving complaints about transparency because they only spent $200,000 of the donated bail funds. Therefore, Kamala Harris contributed to Minnesota Freedom Fund, raising at least $15 million beginning June 1st, when she first sent out her tweet, and the New York Times announced Minnesota Freedom Fund had raised $20 million also on June 1st. June 21st, NPR released an audio recording of an interview with Octavia Smith, board president of Minnesota Freedom Fund, who claims she did not know how people were able to locate Minnesota Freedom Fund to donate $35 million. Ms. Smith would, of course, have us all believe this was all a coincidence. However, an article dated April 5th, 2017, published in the Minnesota Star Tribune on the origins of Minnesota Freedom Fund says several legal entities were exploring to expand Minnesota Freedom Fund by meeting with the nonprofit Legal Rights Center who has ties to ACLU Minnesota. On August 9, 2020, Fox 9 Minneapolis aired an investigative report into Minnesota Freedom Fund. An interview with a staff member of Minnesota Freedom Fund revealed 12 people were bailed out. However, when Fox 9 took a closer look, they discovered since George Floyd's death, the fund has bailed out at least 184 people. Minnesota Freedom Fund is also assisting 400 people with what they call pretrial justice, like legal fees and lost wages. Fox 9 also indicates Minnesota Freedom Fund's bail records are difficult and perhaps impossible to locate. Fox 9 Minneapolis and The Daily Caller have released the names and violent crimes of some of the rioters bailed out by Minnesota Freedom Fund. These are the crimes they committed before they were bailed out during the riots, except for one of them. Donovan Dexter Boone, 31, was arrested after he allegedly broke into his son's mother's apartment and proceeded to strangle her in front of her minor children. Davlin Gates, 28, was arrested after he allegedly strangled a woman just days after she allowed him to move in with her. Marcus Butler, 40, was arrested after he allegedly assaulted his girlfriend. Matthew Thompson, 29, was arrested after he pushed his way into a domestic partner's house while smoking a blunt and smelling like alcohol. Tyrone Shields, 53, was arrested after he allegedly left a larger-than-golf-ball-sized bump on the head of his wife of 19 years. Reese Bonneville, 29, was arrested after he allegedly assaulted his domestic partner and two officers who came to apprehend him, leaving one with a black eye and another with a cut to his tricep. Timothy Wayne Columbus, 36, faces up to 30 years in prison for allegedly sexually assaulting an eight-year-old girl. Jaleel Stallings was charged with attempted murder for shooting at SWAT teams during the riots. Darnica Floyd was charged with second-degree murder for stabbing a friend to death. Christopher Boswell, twice convicted rapist is currently facing charges of kidnapping and sexual assault in two separate cases. The timeline in this summary strongly suggests widespread abuse of 501c3 tax-exempt status by organizations used as political arms to incite anarchy against police, communities, and lobby in political favor of bail reform during a federal election in violation of IRS rules. This timeline also shows a suspicious pattern of an organized conspiracy by Democrats and anarchists to incite violence against police, 
rioting, arson, and looting, causing mayhem and criminal chaos. In addition, Kamala Harris' promoting of Minnesota Freedom Fund is unethical on its face, as funds requested lead to a third-party website fundraising account with ActBlue Charities that originated with a political entity, non-charitable ActBlue account with the Iowa Senate Democrats. From the front lines of America's leading political news and opinion, I'm Alex Dadig with Front Page Index. Politics for you.